It's the transportation backbone of almost 200 cities around the world. Covering over 11,000 miles and carrying nearly 170 million people every day. But 150 years ago, the subway is a pipe dream. To dig a tunnel underneath the streets of New York in 1869 almost boggles the mind. Boston and New York race to be first. New York shouldn't be following Boston. The American city will never be the same. History is full of ideas that start out seeming radical and then go to being indispensable. This is Subway Wars. On March 28, 1895, Boston breaks ground and becomes the first city in America to build a subway. Workers begin construction on a 1.3 mile line under Boston Common, between two stations, with three more to come shortly thereafter. Construction of the Boston subway was mostly through former tidelands. So most of the subway in Boston was dug by hand. They had some primitive steam shovels, but it really was laborers and horses and carts moving dirt every day. It's an advantage over New York. Engineers aren't blasting over 100 feet deep through bedrock. The majority of track will be laid using a method called cut and cover. Starting from the surface, you excavate down to the level that the subway is going to be, and then cover it with material that people on the street can go over. So it's safer than digging a tunnel, but more destructive to the people on the surface. For the next two years, construction moves forward at a rapid pace. After six years of red tape and delays, at the dawn of a new century, construction begins on the New York City subway. Boston may have started first, but New York's will be much more ambitious. Nearly 8,000 workers, primarily immigrants and African Americans, will build a subway system almost three times the size of Boston's. There would have been bragging rights to beat Boston. The original subway, they start at City Hall. They go up the east side of the island. They cross over at 42nd Street and go up the west side of Manhattan to 145th Street, which is North Harlem, Washington Heights area. New York has rapidly grown in the decades since Alfred Beach first proposed a subway from City Hall to Central Park. As the population moves further away from downtown to escape overcrowding, the city plans the subway route to make it possible for people to now travel to their jobs miles away from their homes. This transportation system is now spreading its tentacles out into the other parts of the city to allow people to live in a nice little home, yet jump on that subway and zip their way into their place of work. With the advent of electricity, for the first time in history, that work can be 24 hours a day. The need to efficiently move people to and from their jobs at any time makes the subway imperative. Electricity had a major impact on the way Americans lived, primarily by erasing nighttime. Factories can operate around the clock if they want to now, because you can light up the workplace. And what sets New York subway apart from any other in the world, it will provide 24-hour-a-day service and a revolutionary idea by William Parsons. Parsons designs intentionally dual tracks, local and express, both ways. So this four track system really is a game changer for mass transit. Six months later, by December 1st, 1897, construction is complete and Frank Sprague's electric motor helps Boston claim the title of America's first subway. Over 100,000 passengers climb on board opening day, and more than 50 million in its first year. The opening of the Boston subway in 1897 sent ripples across public transportation forever. New York and Paris still didn't even have a subway system. But Boston isn't finished yet. Digging is underway to add three more stations within a year. Boston is first, and they get to say that they're first for time and memorial. But it's also true that Boston is first because theirs was a much more straightforward build. 
It was a simpler construction, did not require as much engineering finesse as New York's did. The New York subway was momentous for a lot of reasons. The size, the scope, the breadth of the project. It was a really big deal, dwarfing what Boston had opened. On October 27, 1904, four and a half years after breaking ground, New York subway is finally unveiled. When the turnstiles open to the public at 7 p.m., more than 100,000 New Yorkers pour into stations across the city for their first ride. In a year, it will be over 100 million. The emergence of the subway literally forever transforms New York City. And what we saw in 1904 is how connected the city becomes because of mass transit. After years of delays, the city comes together to create an engineering marvel. At just over nine miles and 28 stations, New York can now claim it's the largest subway system in America, in large part thanks to William Parsons. I think it's safe to say that the New York City subway cements William Parsons' legacy as perhaps the greatest engineer in the city's history. The subway was by far his greatest contribution. For the man who gave power to Boston's subway, Frank Sprague, the electric motor cements his legacy. You think of Alexander Graham Bell and the telephone. You think of Edison and the light bulb. Frank J. Sprague is in that series of innovators and inventors. What Sprague's invention of the electric motor does is make high capacity, high speed transportation possible. The New York subway's original prophet, Alfred Beach, never sees his vision come to life. He dies at age 69 of pneumonia on New Year's Day, 1896, four years before construction begins. But in 1912, while workers are digging a subway extension beneath Lower Manhattan, they rediscover his legacy. The construction company is building a line right at Broadway, which follows a lot of the same track that the pneumatic subway did. And they come upon the remnants of Beach's line. They stumbled upon the original car that Alfred Beach had built that still existed and still was sitting down underneath the streets of New York. 150 years ago, Beach's revolutionary idea of a railway beneath the city, once dismissed as a joke, is now an essential part of life in 180 cities around the world, speeding through the depths 